You may have heard that the Palestinian Authority's government recently dissolved, even after not holding elections for nearly 20 years. Well, they finally formed a new government, even though I'm not real sure it was legally done, but the American administration can't seem to stop fawning all over them. Secretary of State Antony Blinken just can't stop talking about how excited the Biden administration is to work with this new PA government, right? Unfortunately, he missed a very crucial fact, and that is this new government includes ministers that are outspoken and public supporters of terrorism. Make no mistake, more than 80% of the Palestinian Arabs in Judea and Samaria support Hamas. Most of them want Hamas for their leadership in their government, and the new Palestinian Authority government, even though it's made up of Fatah members, is no different than the last. Unless, of course, you include the ministers who are more outspoken in support of terrorism than the old government was. All of this and a whole lot more on today's episode. I'm Luke Hilton, and this is The Israel Guys. Hello and welcome to The Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of anti-Israel propaganda and Jew hatred, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. We're still on the road this week, guys, in the heartland of Missouri, and still coming to you as much as we possibly can. Please consider subscribing. We just passed the 150,000 subscriber mark on YouTube. Whatever platform you watch, listen, follow us on social media. It's all at The Israel Guys. We would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and leave me a comment if you're a new viewer or subscriber on the channel. I would like to ask you guys a favor. Please go to theisraelguys.com slash summit or just go to the website and click on the banner there at the, on the page. Um, we're having a conference this May, May 20th through 22nd, and I just feel like it's so important more than ever. We're going to talk about a dedicated and massive push for Palestinian statehood on today's show. This conference comes directly against that, and I'm asking you guys, please sacrifice, please consider investing, taking vacation time, coming to Nashville, Tennessee to join us. We're going to have so many speakers from Judea and Samaria talking about how it is Israel's right to be sovereign in their homeland. Please check it out, theisraelguys.com slash summit. We'll have the link down in the description and below as well. I'm asking you guys, this is a sacrifice on your part. Please consider coming to Nashville, Tennessee, May 20th through 22nd to stand publicly, the only conference in the United States that is standing publicly with Israel's right to be sovereign in their own land. So quick recap because we're going to dive into what the uh, U.S. Secretary of State is just falling all over Israel for, uh, or falling all over the Palestinian Authority for. Quick recap, February 26, 2024, this year, the entire Palestinian Authority government resigned, including the Prime Minister Mohammed Shtia. What a, a lot of people don't know is he's just a figurehead, much the same as a, as like a president. The president of Israel is more of a symbolic figure, uh, right? The king of England is more of a symbolic figure. The prime minister of the Palestinian Authority is pretty much a symbolic figure. The guy pulling all the strings and running the show behind the scenes, Mahmoud Abbas. He's the chairman or the president, right? Um, by the way, Mahmoud Abbas is 88 years old, 14 years over his term limit, and he's illegally chairman of the PA, and he's also a dictator who brutally oppresses his people. So, this week, Antony Blinken, Secretary of State, is just falling head over heels for this new Palestinian government, which is going to be so much better than the last one. Even though an op-ed in JNS, which I'll get to in a second, actually uh, actually shows that several ministers, yes, ministers, are open and public supporters of terrorism against the Jewish people. Uh, during a call with Mahmoud Abbas, the U.S. Secretary of State reiterated that the United States looks forward to working with the new Palestinian Authority cabinet to promote peace, security, and prosperity, and urge the implementation of necessary reforms. Didn't clarify what those reforms are. Hopefully they include things like stop paying terrorists in Israeli prisons, stop teaching your children in your school curriculum to kill Jews, stop promoting terrorism and violence against Israel on your uh, state-funded and state-run uh, TV networks. Antony Blinken also went on to emphasize that a revitalized, revitalized PA is essential to delivering results for the Palestinian people in both the West Bank and Gaza. Now the United States is saying this new PA government is key to helping the people of Gaza 
and the West Bank, right? And he went on to say, quote, continues its urgent work of advancing a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas as part of a hostage deal, which would also facilitate a surge of crucial humanitarian assistance into Gaza and create a pathway to a more enduring peace. So just to give you an idea of what's going on here, because Hamas has come out, has made themselves to be so odious and so bad by just coming out and murdering and raping and torturing thousands of people, right? Now, all of a sudden, the Palestinian Authority, controlled by Fatah, just are these happy, peaceful, good guys, right? Not. It's just that they're less bad than Hamas, right? So now the, the United States is looking to them to be the good guys and help the people of Gaza and help the Palestinian people. He also made sure to mention that the United States... Uh, and this is a quote, he said, he underscored the U.S. commitment to the realization of the creation of an independent Palestinian state with security guarantees for Israel. That's an oxymoron, by the way. There's no such thing as a Palestinian state with security guarantees for Israel, okay? The only Palestinian state would be suicide for Israel because it's in their heartland, overlooking the airport, overlooking Tel Aviv, overlooking the coastline, uh, overlooking Jerusalem. Welcome to a journey through faith and history like no other. The Israel Bible is not just another Hebrew Bible. It's a bridge connecting the scriptures, the land of Israel, and our lives today. With illuminating commentary that explores the significance of Israel and how humanity's fate intertwines with this sacred land, the Israel Bible offers insights into God's promises and prophecies for the end of days. These promises are unfolding before our very eyes, making this Bible a vital companion for anyone seeking to understand the depth of God's Word. Featuring the original Hebrew text alongside clear, accurate English translations, the Israel Bible brings these ancient words to life. Enhanced with beautiful charts, maps, and illustrations, it deepens your understanding and connects you more intimately with God's teachings. Crafted with you in mind, the Israel Bible is more than a book, it's a revelation. It's a guide for navigating life's complexities through faith and wisdom, inspired by the teachings that have guided generations. We're living in crazy times. Please let the Israel Bible be your guide. Check out the link below to get the Israel Bible today. Um, Abbas, Mahmoud Abbas, who again is this hidden figure who's 88 years old, who's Ill illegally um, in the dictatorship position for the Palestinian Authority, responded, and he, quote, stressed the need to halt immediately the Israeli aggression on the Palestinian people, particularly in Gaza, even though he's not in charge in Gaza, and the importance of expediting the entry of medical and food supplies and supplying water, electricity, and fuel to the whole of the Gaza Strip. And he also, quote, called upon Blinken to prevent Israel from launching any military operation in Gaza's Rafah city and warned of the possible repercussions of such an operation, particularly affecting innocent civilians. So again, Abbas is pretending to be this good guy. You know, we want to get food into Gaza. We want to get humanitarian assistance. Israel has to stop their aggression against my people and against the city of Rafah and has to protect innocent civilians. By the way, I don't have time to get into it, but there's a new report coming out that the price of food in Gaza is dropping because there's so much food available. That's right. The people of Gaza are not starving at all. Again, don't have time to get into it. Hopefully, we'll talk about that on a, another Israel Guys show. My question is, am I missing something? Like, the United States is just fawning all over the Palestinian Authority now, right? They're these amazing guys who are going to bring peace to the region. We're going to partner with them to create a Palestinian state. What am I missing? The PA has a known track record of supporting and glorifying terrorism. They're a corrupt, non-functioning government with their only function being that they're a dictatorship that oppresses their own people. They even killed a journalist that dared to speak up against their oppression. Um, their own security forces have over and over again, especially recently committed terrorist attacks. Security forces that, by the way, were trained and funded by the United States. Just last week, there was a terrorist attack in Israel that was committed by a PA security force officer, meaning a PA police officer funded and trained by the United States. Um, and again, it's just because Hamas is so much worse that now the PA just looks like these good guys, right? Bottom line, they're terrorists. And to uh, underscore that fact, there was an op-ed that I read in JNS by Itamar Marcus, who is the head of the Palestinian Media Watch, um, talking about, and I don't have time to get into all of it, but I'll link the article down below so you can read it, talking about how at least two of the new ministers in the new PA government are terrorist supporters. For instance... The new Minister of Women's Affairs, which is probably a joke because I don't think there's any such thing as women's affairs in the brutal Islamic dictatorship of the Palestinian Authority, spoke at an event in 2018 honoring 
Dalal Mugrabi, who masterminded a terror attack on Israel in 1978. She was the leader of a group who murdered 37 civilians in a mass terrorist attack on a, an Israeli bus. 37 people, including 12 children, also an American uh, journalist or photographer, was also killed in that. Um, the minister of her, her name is, or the minister, new women's minister, right, in the PA government. She also regularly advocates for the Palestinian, advocates for the Palestinian people's right to resist, right, which is just another word for kill Jews, commit attacks against Jews, commit violence, commit terrorism, right? Um, so she's just an open and public supporter of terrorism. Also, Mohammed Mustafa Najem is the new minister of religious affairs for the PA. Should be a peaceful ministry, right? Nope. He openly called for terror against Jews during the Second Intifada on national TV. The PA's national TV. Um, my question is, does this mean that the United States is actively supporting terrorism in the Palestinian state that they're so desperately trying to create? By the way, it seems like maybe this resignation and then the implementation of this new illegal government under the PA could have been the U.S.'s doings. Not a fact, just a theory, but um, the U.S. has been hinting since the beginning of the war on October 7th that they want the PA to take over control of Gaza after the war is over, right? They've been hinting at that over and over, um, and reports are out there that they've been pressuring the PA to make internal changes so that they can look good when they publicly begin to push for the Palestinian state, which is actively happening right now, um, so that the international community can have good reason to trust them. Maybe it was America's influence that caused the government to resign and implement an entirely new government. The problem is, this new government is no better than the last one. Also, it doesn't matter because the prime minister of the Palestinian Authority doesn't do anything. Um, the cabinet, you know, their their cabinet and their parliament hasn't met since, like, they haven't convened their council since, like, I don't know, more than 10 years, something like that. They don't legislate anything. Mahmoud Abbas, the chairman or president of the PA, just makes all the decisions at 88 years old and being an illegal dictator. He just does whatever he wants. Any government that they put in place is just a farce. They're just figureheads to make the rest of the world happy, right? By the way, there is, an, like I said, there's an alarming rise of countries who are determined to recognize the Palestinian state. We have the Prime Minister of Spain, who is on a tour of Jordan, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia at the moment, make an announcement while in Jordan that Spain is determined to recognize a Palestinian state by this July. Ironically, the European Union Parliament is holding elections in June, and so uh, that's why you have countries like Spain, uh, Malta, Slovenia, Ireland, all and other countries all willing to recognize a state, maybe because there's elections coming up and they're trying to win over their new Muslim uh, residents of their countries. Again, all of that's just theory, but I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? And... Um, the question is, why do you have all these countries that say, we're going to recognize the Palestinian state, as if they had the authority to do that? Israeli Foreign Ministry spokesman Lior Hayat tweeted on March 25th, quote, the comments of the Prime Minister of Spain, Pedro Sanchez, about recognizing a Palestinian state, as well as the joint statement by Spain, Malta, Slovenia, and Ireland about their readiness to recognize a Palestinian state, constitute a reward for terrorism. Because October 7th happens, Hamas massacres the Jewish people and declares war on the Jewish state of Israel, and now the rest of the world says, time to recognize a Palestinian state. Is that not a reward for terrorism? You can let me know what you think. Um, and obviously, this is, an, a, this is also a push for the United Nations to recognize a Palestinian state, right? Do they have the right to do that? Does the European Union have the right to create a Palestinian state? Can they? Does this go against all the normal rules of negotiations and agreements and setting up new states and countries? Obviously, it definitely does. At the same time, you have the PA pushing for full member recognition or full member status at the UN. Uh, for years, they've had an observer status because obviously you have to have a country to be a member of the UN, right? But uh, they just announced, the PA just announced that they're hoping to be recognized as a full member of the UN on April 18th, which is coming up very, very soon. Which obviously sounds ridiculous, but when you have all these countries in the European Union and so many other countries, you know, saying we're ready to recognize a Palestinian state, it honestly is a little bit scary because if you have enough of the world pushing for this and supporting it, then it's going to get harder and harder for Israel to resist. That's why it's more important for so many of us to stand up and say, no, enough is enough, not happening. And again, why I ask you guys, please come to Nashville on May 20th through 22nd to stand with Israel against a Palestinian state. Um, 
To be a country, you got to have a land, you got to have a people, you got to have a government. The Arabs residing in Judea and Samaria, Jerusalem and Gaza have none of those things. All of the land they reside on is inside a country known as Israel, a legal democratic country. Arabs living in Judea and Samaria and Gaza and East Jerusalem and Gaza, they're from all over the Middle East. Some of them, yes, are from that region. Others are from Egypt, Jordan, Syria, um, Lebanon, all over that area. Their government has been non-functioning for 15 plus years. They don't have a democracy. They have a dictatorship. They've only promoted violence, terrorism, ethnic cleansing, and genocide for years and years and years. Israel's ambassador to the UN, Gilad Erdan, said, quote, whoever supports recognizing a Palestinian state at such a time not only gives a prize to terror, but also backs unilateral steps which are contradictory to the agreed upon principle of direct negotiations. To receive full member status, nine out of 15 members of the United Nations Security Council have to vote in favor of it. The U.S. has the option to veto, but they've been hinting that they might just kind of withdraw that. They might not actually veto it if it happens. But then also two-thirds of the U.N. General Assembly would also have to vote in favor. Again, like I said, they don't have the authority to do this. They don't have the right to do it. It goes against all normal negotiations and international rules, right? Um, it can't really happen, but... If enough countries, European Union, UN, countries, nations support this, come out publicly in favor, it gets harder and harder for Israel to resist. And again, it's our job to stand against that tide of terrorism and violence. Um, in conclusion, this may not be in the mainstream media, but there is a massive push to create a Palestinian state from countries all over the world. And it's going to take people like you and like me Biblical Zionists, I like to call us, because we believe in the Bible and we believe in the right of the Jewish people to be sovereign in their own land. It's going to take all of us, biblical Zionists from all over the world, to stop it. Please pray. Please continue standing with Israel. Please come to the Israel Summit in Nashville, Tennessee, May 20th through 22nd. Links down in the description below to sign up. Um, make sure you guys check out the Israel Bible by, cl by clicking the link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe. Get that conversation going. We'd love to hear what you think in the comment section below. As always, tune out the fake news and tune into what is actually happening in the land of Israel. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.